Hello, everyone. I am Brady Briggs here for another episode of the Combat Logic. Um, it's Friday. You know, it's a day before fight night. Better late than never. I don't have a co-host today because I have an appointment that I have to go to work. His time slots didn't fit. So we're going to go over UFC 268 right now. And I think it's very sad to say Sean Strickland was unable to find or the UFC was unable to find a replacement for Sean Strickland after Luke Rockhold pulled up, which really sucks. Um, they were also unable to find a replacement for Irene Aldana um, after Jermaine Durand and me pulled off. Both really good fighters that I love watching fight, and uh, that sucks. But hopefully they can rebook Rockhold and Strickland. That's a pretty interesting fight. And Durand and me and Irene Aldana, that's a pretty good fight too. But anyways, let's talk about the fights that we do have. We got O'Day Osborne opening up the card. That's a really interesting uh, affair. He's fighting CJ Verga, but. I got a lot of hype for O'Day Osborne, but, dude, check it out. He made his UFC debut at 135 pounds. Then he went up to 145. Then he went down to 125 when he was knocked out by Manal Kopp in his last fight. Now he's fighting at 125 again. Um, I don't really know if it's the best weight class for him, but he is 5'7 with a 73-inch reach. So... That's that's pretty astounding. Like that's better than Connor. We, we know Connor's arms are long as shit. He's five nine with a seventy four inch reach. This dude is two inches shorter with one inch less reach. His arms are pretty goddamn long. Melsic Bogdasarian is fighting Bruno Souza. Man, I'm excited for this. Melsic is a fucking assassin, dude. He's a pro kickboxer. He's a pro kickboxing champion. Three and zero in pro boxing. Nine and two in uh, kickboxing. Six and one in MMA. He, uh, he lost his first fight by armbar. Then he won his UFC debut with a head kick in his last fight. Performance of the night. I can't wait to see what's next from him, man. I love watching this dude. Dustin Dustin Jacoby is going to fight John Alon. That should be good. Uh, Jacoby's had a good return since coming back to the UFC. Um, John Volante and Chris Barnett. This is going to be a really good fight because John Vellante, I'm sorry, bro, bro, but you're not a heavyweight. He's kind of like he's a heavy handed boxer. Um, and Chris Barnett is built somewhat like Vellante. He's actually shorter. He's like five, nine, dude. And he's a heavyweight. He weighs like 250, 260. But he's so athletic and he's so fun to watch. I'm glad the UFC got a hold of him. He lost his UFC debut to somebody that I can't think of right now. And that was upset. Maybe Ben Rothwell. Yeah, I think actually, I think it was Ben Rothwell. Um, but yeah, hopefully he can win this one. He's a lot of fun to watch. Ian Gary is fighting Jordan Williams to open up regular prelims. And then we got Edmund Shabazian in North North Saudi Amavov. This is a good fight, dude, because Amavov. He's two and one in the UFC, but he's coming off a knockout win over Ian Heinish. Uh, to our surprise, none of us thought that was going to happen. And Edmund Shabazian is about as much of a prodigy as we've seen. He's still only 23 years old. Well, he's going to be 24 this month. Holy fuck, he's younger than me. That's crazy. He's so good. He's a big boy, too. He's so much bigger than me. That shows you we are not all equal. Um, but yeah, Shabazian's coming off two losses. He was winning both of those fights. He almost knocked Eric Brunson out in the first round. He almost knocked it, uh, Jack Hermanson out in the first round. Ended up getting TKO'd in, almost in round two, but in early round three, the Brunson fight, and then lost a decision against Hermanson. I think uh, I think Edmund's going to come back and you know show us what he's got. Here we go. Phil Hawes fighting Chris Curtis. That's cool. Phil Hawes is uh, Nasruddin Amavov's loss. And he just beat Kyle Dawkins. So, that should be interesting. The return of Ally Quinta. We got the return of Ray Janelle, man. He's fighting Bobby Green. These two have been supposed to fight for, fought for like fucking five, six, seven years now, but they're going to fight tomorrow night. Man, this is a really good fight. Both of them have taken a couple of short-term retirements throughout their career. Um, Bobby Green just returned last year, I think, in 2020. He might have returned in 2019. 
And uh, Ally Aquinta, he also took another break before that. And Ally Aquinta is coming off this, his second, like, what, two-year break um, coming into this one. He lost to Don Cerrone and Dan Hooker. And he hasn't fought since. Let's see when that was. That was like, fuck, when I moved on to Virginia. It was a long time ago. Not quite. October 2019. That was the last time he fought. Nonetheless, 25 months ago. Alex Pajaya, the last man to knock out Israel Adesanya. Actually, the only man to knock out Israel Adesanya is fighting in the preliminary main event. And now they were initially going to open up the main card. I don't know what went into that decision-making process, but they're not anymore. They're headlining the prelims. And it's a good prelim headliner, man. Alex Pajaya, man, this dude is one of the best kickboxers in the world. Like, probably one of, the, like, the top 10, if not definitely top 15 pound for pound kickboxers on the planet. Um, He's 1-0 and in boxing. He's 33-7 and in kickboxing. Just like Glover Touchere is 33-7 and in MMA. He's 33-7 and in kickboxing. And he's 3-1 and in MMA. All right? He lost his uh, he lost his MMA debut, right? Yeah, by rear naked choke back in 2015. He came back two months later to win by knockout. And then he came back five months later, four months later, to win by another knockout in 2016. And then he took a break and didn't fight in MMA again. Until about this time last year. Holy fuck, dude, that was a year ago now? That's crazy. That was a year ago? Dude, time really does fly, man. Holy fuck, that was November 20th, 2020, when he got that knockout in LFA. God damn, man. That's crazy. He hasn't fought in a year. He's 34 years old. Well, he's a little younger than I thought he was. That's good. But his opponent, Andres, Andres Michaelitis, <clears throat> this dude is a former CS middleweight champion, a former EFL light heavyweight champion. Let's see what his dimensions are here. He is six foot with a 76 inch reach. That's pretty impressive. That's like a Diaz. And Perheya, holy fuck, he's 6'4 and a half with an 80 inch reach. Damn. All right. So he ain't going to have any problems in that regard. But if this dude can grapple, he might have problems with that. Even because this dude has four submission wins. He's 13 and four, Andreas is. Uh, Alex Perheya's uh, opponent. He's 13 and four. He's one and one inside the UFC. He's got four submission wins out of those 13 which isn't necessarily a high number. You know, he's got many more knockouts. He's got seven knockouts. Um, but the one good thing about this, I said 13 and four, right? Those four losses, all knockouts. So hopefully this is a good matchup for him. Dude, I really wish they didn't do this, but they moved Justin Gagey versus Michael Chandler to the main card opener. Actually, no, I get why they did it. It's for Trevor Whitman. Dude, Trevor would have had to go out there three times in a row. That Yeah, that, that would have been hard. Okay, I get it. Still sucks, though, because this should be the feature fight. The feature fight's pretty good, too. But Justin Gage and Michael Chandler, man, where can I start with these two? Holy fuck. All right, well, we'll start with Gage is 22-3 and three as a pro. Chandler is 22-6 and six as a pro. That's pretty fucking similar. Um, Gagey has 19 finishes of those 22 wins. Chandler has 17 finishes of those 22 wins. Of those 17 finishes, um, Chandler has 10 knockouts and seven submissions. A lot of those submissions were set up with his hands, by the way. And all of those 22 wins of Gagey's, 19 are knockouts with one submission. That's actually the same as Conor McGregor, by the way. Conor McGregor is 22 and six, as what like Chandler, and he's got 19 knockout wins and one submission win, just like AG. So, nonetheless, it's pretty impressive. What else can I say? Um, Chandler's only one and one in the UFC. Uh, AG is four and three, I think, five and three in the UFC. Um, they're both six-time world champions. Gagey is a six-time World Series of Fighting 
uh, lightweight champion. Chandler's a six-time Bellator lightweight champion. There is a little bit of a difference, though. We'll say Bellator is a little bit better than World Series of Fighting was on average, right? But Gagey won the belt, and he defended it five times. Chandler won the belt, defended it a couple times, lost it, won it back, lost it, won it, defended it, lost it. That's how he became a six-time champion. He won six world title fights for Bellator. He didn't win the belt and just defend it um, consecutively like Justin Gagey did. That being said, man, how does this fight go? Like, holy fuck, I don't know. Like, Chandler has shown a susceptibility to leg kicks. Um, and if anybody can hurt his leg, it's Justin Gagey. But, dude, Chandler can crack. He might be the hardest hitting lightweight that there is. It's definitely, it's definitely between these two and Dustin Poirier. Um, a lot of people would say Connor. I don't think so. Not at 155, especially with his disevolution. Like, he'd never evolved. Like, at 145, yeah, he's a hard hitter. Plus, Connor, I kind of feel like, I don't know, he's never hit me before, but I don't think he has that much. He probably does hit hard, but he doesn't have power behind his strikes like a Poirier or a Gagey would. They have thudding strikes, you know? Like, they land on impact. Connor's punches stink. Like, they rattle his opponent's brains because they're too precise. They're too accurate. There's, it's different. It's not pure power. Um, nonetheless, I can't wait to see that fight. That's my favorite fight of the night. I think that's everybody's favorite fight of the night. Usman and Co- Covington, too, is a close second, but that's going to be a really good one. Shane Burgos and Billy Corantillo. This is going to be really good. Burgos coming off that loss to Edson Barboza, I believe. Oh, wow, he's coming off losses to Emma and Barboza. While Billy Corantillo has only lost once in the UFC so far to Gavin Tucker. Was, dude, that was a really surprising performance by Tucker, man. It was a really surprising performance. Um, Yeah, dude, Corantillo is 4-1 and one in the UFC. He absolutely mauls people. He's almost got like a Colby Covington-like pace or a Grant Dawson-like pace. Um. You know, I'd like to see him fight Grant Dawson, actually. Put him in a 150-pound catch weight. That would be dope because Dawson's a lightweight and all. And, yeah, Billy Q is a featherweight. But, dude, that would be a good fight. Um. All right. So, our replacement feature fight comes between three-time, four-time, I think four-time, UFC lightweight champion Frankie Edgar and Marlon Vera. No. This one is super exciting. Dude, Marlon Vera is still only 28 years old. He's going to be 29 now. But – or he's going to be 29 in like a month rather. But he had a little bit of a hiccup. You know, he, he won five fights in a row, okay, and they were all finishes. And then he fought Song Yudong at 145 pounds, lost a unanimous decision, even though everyone in their fucking mom knows he won that fight. Everyone knows he won that fight. There was no way in hell he lost that fight. It was so bad of a decision. Then he had that win over Sean O'Malley, which, let's be honest, I mean, it's kind of fluke-like. I'm not going to sit here and call it a fluke, but it's kind of fluke-like. O'Malley was looking better than ever before that happened. Um, Then he lost to Jose Aldo, a close fight, 1-1 going into the third. He got his back taken, controlled in the third. Aldo's a multiple-time world champion with all the experience in the world. I was super happy to see him win that fight. And then in his last fight, he avenged his, what, I think it was his first UFC loss. Actually, no, it was his second UFC loss. He avenged to Davey Grant in his last fight. And he's fighting Frankie Edgar, who isn't the same anymore, but is still a very, very good fighter. He's still a very high level, very experienced individual that can still beat a lot of the best in the world, as he showed in the Pedro Munoz fight, even though I thought he lost that fight, even though 17 out of 20 media outlets thought he lost that fight. Two of the three judges thought he won it. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I'd say this is Vera's biggest opponent that he's had to date. Other than Jose Aldo, can't wait to see how he does. And to see Frankie Edgar, does he still have it? He is 40 years old. He just turned 40 last month. Man, whole 11 years older. Co-main event, 
All right, the co-main event and main event are both title fight rematches. So, Rosemary Yunus versus Wei Li Zhang, or yeah, Wei Li Zhang, and Kamari Usman versus Colby Covington, two. Both of them rematches. All right, going into the first one, Wei Li was champion. Rose is now the champion. And going into the first one, Kamaru Usman was the champion. He is still the champion. Now, something to be said about these, both of these fights, not only are they rematches, not only are they for the title, but it is champion versus number one contender for both of these. Rose Nami Yunus is the champion. Wei Li Zhang is the number one contender. Kamaru Usman is the champion. Palm for palm, best fighter in the world. Colby Covington is the number one contender. So this is going to be super interesting. Now, I think Rose... I think Rose beat Whaley again. I thought she was going to win the first fight. A lot of people didn't. I don't know why. Like going into it, yeah, dude, she was nine and four going against a twenty-one and one. But so what, dude? Her boxing is better, and I expected her to win the fight with her boxing. I expected Whaley to have success with her leg kicks, but it didn't go that way, and. Rose caught her with a head kick, as we all know, but, like, she's been showing her boxing lately. You know, like, we've been seeing her hands a lot every time she fights. So we forget about her Taekwondo background. And what kind of head kick was that? A snappy, like, head kick from short range, like, just as a perfect Taekwondo-like kick. And I forgot she had that in her arsenal, and she got the knockout with it. Now, this reminds me a lot of her initial title reign. Because in her initial title reign, she beat the, what, 14-0 and 0 or 15-0, and 0, Ioana Jacek, the unbeatable Ioana Jacek, you know, kickboxing champion, fucking five-time, six-time UFC champion. She was 14-0, and, and Rose knocked her out in the first round. She was like 6-3 and three going into that fight. So she was 6-3 six, six and three beating a 14-0 and 9-4 and and beating a 21-1. and one. What does that tell you? Like, that's remarkable, Okay. No, she knocked you out in the first fight, in the first round, and then won a unanimous decision over her in the second fight. She just did that again against the first ever Chinese champion, first round knockout. Now I see her winning this one over five rounds, just like she did the first, in her first title reign. And then the main event. All I can say is, man, that first fight was so good. It was so good. And I agree with Colby about the nut shot. I really do. Like that, that was not, it wasn't a nut shot. It was right to Kamaru's liver. No, he did poke him in the eye though. He, that eye poke did land. So, <clears throat> and I'm really hoping that Colby's jaw holds up because I'll tell you what, Kamaru has gotten a lot better at striking, a lot better. And I, man, Colby's going to need to wrestle at least a little bit. He did hint at it that he's going to. So that's good. But, man, I really want Colby to win this. Even if Kamaro comes back and wins the immediate trilogy, like, I just want Colby to be the champion, man. He never got a shot. It's almost like Tony Ferguson. I mean, now he's getting his second shot. But we all know that he would have been the UFC waterweight champion had he fought Tyron Woodley in 2017 like he was supposed to. But, no, he was going to fight Tyron. But Tyron's like, no, I'm going to be out with a shoulder injury until December. So if Colby thought it was okay to get his nasal surgery that he needed, that's why his cardio took a shit on him in that fourth round of the Hafeo Dos Anjos fight, okay? He got his nasal surgery. What do you know? Tyron Woodley's fighting Darren Till on short notice, like four or five weeks notice. He didn't want to fight Colby. Um, that doesn't matter, though. He hasn't been the champion in a long time. Kamaru Usman has. Colby thinks Kamaru hasn't wanted to fight him, too. But... <clears throat> I don't see that either. He's just, you know, he's a champion trying to fight the best in the world. Kamaru does say a lot of shit that, you know, gets people to not like him, but dude, he's special. You can't deny that. And he and Colby are a lot like the same fighter. The only difference is I would say Kamaru is more of a distant striker while Colby is more in your face, willing to take shots. And Kamaru secures takedowns and chills out in the guard, raining down ground upon Colby will usually get takedowns up along the fence and wear on his opponents along the fence, you know, take their back along the fence, shit like that. But other than that, and the physical attributes, you know, Kamaru is more of a physical man than Colby is. Kamaru is a huge water weight, and Colby is a pretty small water weight. Like, he could probably fight at 155 and do really well. 
But other than that, they're the same fighter, man. And I cannot wait to see this rematch. So what do you guys think is going to happen? How do you see it going? And who do you want to win? Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you. Like and subscribe.